Hello, you're back with a single malt review. This is our first time filming in quite a while. Despite our regular output of videos, we only get to give it a film once every month or two. So it's good to be back. What have we got, Tim? Yes, we, we thought um, we'll sluice out the cobwebs because we haven't <laughs> been here for a little while. As Dave said, we've had, oh, we've had extra lockdowns. We've had all sorts of things getting in the way, but no longer, no longer. We are reconvening once mm. more. So I thought we'll freshen up with something not too complicated. And not too complicated is definitely the theme of this bottling. Uh, it's new unto us, not one you see in our country too often, it's William Lawson's mm. um, sporting, I suppose this is Mr. Lawson, um, the, I guess, the Scottish fusion of the kilt, but also a leather jacket and singlet. Mm. Uh, very jocular looking man there, looks like he's just gotten off his motorcycle and is about to demand my lunch money. So, um, and it is of course blended scotch whiskey and um, emphasis I think on the blended as Dave's about to mm. discover here. This is not a um, not shooting for a very high malt content. It's blended by whom and why? Well, um, this took me having to read the fine print but this is actually a Dewar's jobby. Uh -huh. uh, which is interesting because we get, we can have all the Dewar's you want down in New Zealand. It's one of the common sort of um, uh, bottom of the shelf uh, stock is there, and um, yeah, Dewar's White Label. Um, you just um, go and grab, you know, fill your boots on that one, so to speak. Uh, this one, not so much, um, but a very, very similar whiskey, as, mm. we, will, as we will see. So, um, we'll jump straight in here. Um, could that be coloured? I think that might be <laughs> coloured. <laughs> is this, um, it, it does actually tell us on the label. This is an EU bottling, so uh -huh. we have his Mitt Farbstoff. Has to be, has to be honest there. Exactly. Uh, okay. Not that I think this um, incredibly rich colour mm -hmm. would be fooling anyone who was uh, in the know. So yes, 40% coloured and chill filtered. Mm -hmm. No surprises there. So, whose uh, malts go into Dewar's blends? Well, Dewar's, owned by, and you'll have to remind me for the, about the fifth time today, um, it's been a bit of a thing, um, they are owned by... No, that was a completely different <laughs> discussion, I don't know yeah. who they're owned by. Um, uh, so, no, we'd, we'd have yeah. to... Um, we'd have to it, the malts that go into this mm. will be multiple. They yeah. will be um, absolutely manifold quantities mm. of bits and pieces going to this to put yeah. it all together. No, but some of the big... Um, Big blend setting you up to fifty or more. Or more, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty would not so be all sorts. Um But what you get first and foremost, that grain. Mm. It's yeah. very crunchy on the nose. Supremely crunchy, mm -hmm. and it was even why, well, yeah, even worse um, when the bottle was new. This one's been cooking off for a very long time now. I thought I'd um, stop drinking it and save the mm -hmm. um, save the last end for us mm. to take a look at rather than finishing it off. And it's really mellowed out. It was one of the, really one of the harder edged blends I've encountered when the bottle was new, which can happen. That, that happens um, with a great many whiskeys. So I'm getting notes of cornflakes, salted porridge, mm. and toffee on the nose. Yeah, there's a wee mm. bit of there's a wee bit of salt there, but they're all they're all yeah they're all very grain centric. There's not a lot of honey. There isn't a hell of a mm. lot of fruit there. There's not a lot of malt characters coming through, but mm. there's a huge amount of cereal and yeah. there's a slight sort of there's a fresh creaminess, almost a huh. almost a fresh sour cream kind of a thing going on there, which is probably one of its better features there because um, what this whiskey needs to survive is that freshness. It's got to be mm. refreshing because it's not bringing a hell of a lot else to the fight. So, on the palate. Oh wow, that is, that is a lot of young grain. Yeah, mm. it's pretty raw and pretty bland yeah. as well. Um, it's fairly jaggy as well. It's pretty mm. hot, peppery. Yeah. Um, that's, it's, it's more sort of texture over flavour and the texture is pretty rough mm. stuff as well. So, depending on what you're, what you're into, um, you know, results, results may vary here, but gentle, gentle it is not. Mm. In addition to that pepper and that young spirit, there's a surprising hint of pineapple and mango, which I quite like. That was a good yeah. surprise. I didn't expect that. Um, there's mm. a little bit of and stronger than I expected. A little bit of space side does manage to sort of mm. pop out there, but it is a it is a bargain, you know, oh, yeah. a budget budget uh, blended whiskey through and through, um, and that's sort of that's sort of where it ends. But but that's we're not drinking it in its environment mm. once again. Um, what what Mr. Lawson there really wants, even more than my lunch money. <laughs> is an ice cube, and mm. I'm, I'm going to grunt him that one. Ah, good. It's 
recipe is that I prepared earlier. This, this I think, is the whiskey's true, true environment here. Big old ice cube, tumbler, and a warm summer's day, and suddenly it smashes into that freshness, ah. amplifies it, and really, really takes it places in the. I'm drinking this for you know refreshment and effect um, and very little else. But yeah, have a have a, have a squiz. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're prone to want to mix a blended scotch, this is perfectly good. If you're one of those whiskey and soda weirdos from the past, then Ooh. that's probably mm. not a bad option. But yeah, get it get it nice and chilled. Get it a wee bit watered down with yeah. that ice. It is crisp and it brings out a certain bitterness too, which mm. is quite a well refreshing on my palate. Yeah, this this is definitely how you want it mm. um, because suddenly that that bite sort of blends in with that freshness and it's a good thing all of a sudden. It is pretty bitter. Um, you could almost not that it tastes similar flavour wise, but you could put this in the Negroni category of this mm. is a strong spirit mix and it has a real real bite in the mouth. It's sort of a it's a resting bitter flavour and so that judging on those terms. I think it's pretty good. Hmm. Um, so we'll say, drinking it in its optimal environment, I'll give this one a 74. It would be well into the 60s, hmm. possibly the low 60s, was I living in a cruel world which <laughs> forced me to drink it straight and warm <laughs> forever. <laughs> but um, it, it not, not outside of that sort of regime, um, we'll say this is, a, this is an inner tumbler with ice score, hmm. but yeah, 74 from me, not cool. bad. And for me, this is an unashamedly, unabashedly, unpretentiously grain-forward young blended whiskey. It has all the weaknesses you'd expect from that, but you know what you're getting. And what you're getting has, yeah, it's got some qualities, it's got some things that stand out. It takes ice nicely, I'm sure it blends nicely, mixes rather. And that nets it a 68 from me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, good stuff. A mm. good one, I think, to us to, us to, um, to boot up on, mm. get those, flush out the dust. Um, Get the joints working, and um, if nothing else, yeah, it has quite a humorous label. So, you, know, you know, I always like a if I can lampoon a label, then I will, and I'll do it. So yes, so that that's Mr. Lawson's finest there. Um, goodness, doesn't he just look? Oh, Louis, okay, you what, mate? Yeah, rough, <laughs> rough individual. All right, all right, that's us. Um, we're really getting into it now. So something a bit more um, interesting just around the corner. And if you were watching, it wasn't a rum. That was an old video fooled you all. There's no rum at all this week. So, Slanger, gotcha. <laughs>